Welcome to our lecture on correlation. In this course, we're going to be looking at linear correlation. The goal is to measure the strength of the linear relationship between two quantitative random variables. Each one has to be measured at least on an interval scale level of measurement. Now, researchers are often trying to find out whether two variables are related. For example, you might be interested in looking at longevity, how long people live, and how many calories they consume per day. Or you might be interested in seeing the amount of time spent on the internet, hours spent on the internet, and high school average, or college GPA for that matter. So anyway, there are lots of cases where you might be interested in just looking at the correlation. And you'll see in a moment how this works. I'm going to show you a simple formula to compute r. r is the correlation coefficient. And that r ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. If you manage to get an r of plus 1, that means it's a perfect positive linear relationship. In fact, when you plot it, you'll see all the points are on a straight line. An r of minus 1 indicates a perfect negative or something called inverse linear relationship. And an r of 0 indicates there's no linear relationship, no relationship between the two variables you're examining. And R, this R is a sample correlation because you're taking a sample, let's say 50 or 30 or 100, but it's a sample. You're not taking the correlation for the entire population. If you were going to do that, the population correlation coefficient is rho. That's the Greek R. It's called rho and you can see it on the slide. Again, you can only compute rho if you take a whole census. So R, in effect, is a sample, it's an estimate of rho. You look at the top of the slide, you see there's one, uh, there's a scatter plot which shows R is plus one. See all the points are on a straight line, you can draw the straight line, no point will be off the line. That's an R of plus one, which indicates a perfect positive linear relationship between the X and Y variables, the two variables. So again, if you find that all the points are on a straight line and it's at a positive slope, that R is plus one, but it's not going to happen generally in the real world. You're more likely to see something like on the right. See the scatter plot? And the points are, it's all, you can see it's linear and it's a positive linear, but it's not going to be plus one. Some points will be above and some points will be below the line. So in the real world, you don't really see perfect relationships. But you might see a very strong positive relationship. For example, you look at hours studied and grades. I guarantee you, and I think everyone would admit, people who study more in general get higher grades. So the, the, it's going to be a positive, a significant positive relationship. But there are other variables as well. That's why you're not going to get an R of 1. There are other variables. It's not only uh, studying that affects grades. You can have two students each spending 20 hours studying for an, an exam. And one might get 100, and the other might get an 80. There's also some random effects. There's always randomness. Sometimes you call it noise. There's noise in the system. And there's also variables you didn't take into account. Like um, if somebody uh, has a high IQ, that may help. And they can get a high grade with less studying. Or they may have previous knowledge. Or there's other factors. That's why generally, you know, you might want to use several variables. But in this course, we're doing simple linear correlation. Now this now we're looking at negative relationships. Now if you get an R of minus one, which again is not going to happen in the real world, you see all the points, they're all on a straight line on the top. You can see the scatter plot, all the points are on a line and R is minus one. But again in the real world you're not going to see something like that because that'll be a perfect negative linear relationship or something's called an inverse relationship. But if you look at the on the side, the scatter plot, you see the points is definitely linear and negative slope, definitely. But some points are not going to be on the line. So many of them are actually, but some won't be. So this will show what we see here is a strong, very strong negative linear relationship, but it's not going to be minus one. What does an R of zero mean? Again, that's Generally, you're not getting exactly zero. But it means there's no linear relationship between X and Y. Again, in the real world, you very rarely see an R of zero. But you might see a low R. Now, look at the two scatter plots. The one on the right 
Well, you see, there, in a sense, there's some kind of relationship there. It's a perfect circle, but R is going to be zero because there's no linear relationship. On the left, you see no relationship. Huh? There's nothing. It's just a, random, a bunch of random points. But uh, you could try. Just take a bunch of number, uh, random numbers and uh, get the R. Chances are it won't be zero, but it might be like 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0.04. And though, once you take more advanced courses, you learn, uh, even in this course, somebody might teach you how to test for significance. But um, when you're testing for significance, you want to know, you know, is the R statistically different from zero? But again, in the real world, you don't see an R of exactly zero, but you might see a very low R, which is basically not statistically different from zero. Something that's very important, once you test X and Y to see if the correlation is significant or not, okay, now you decide that there's a significant correlation. Let's say the R is 0.8, which is pretty strong. It can't go higher than one. So let's say you say it's R is plus 0.8. So you have a strong correlation. You can't really say correlation uh, implies causality. Why? There are four explanations and you find, let's say, X and Y are related. Okay, one possibility is X causes Y. Another possibility is Y causes X. Another possibility is Z causes both X and Y. It's not X and Y that are related. There's a Z factor that affects the X and the Y. And finally, it's just a fluke. We call that spurious correlation. So we have this problem all the time in research. People make the assumption, because two things are related, that they decide which causes which, like poverty and crime. Which causes which? Is it that people are poor and that's why they commit crimes? Is it the other way around? People who commit crimes can't get jobs, which is true, by the way. If you commit crimes, very hard to get a job. So that's why they're poor. We don't know. And maybe it's a third factor. All right. Here's another example. Uh, old, um, we know there's a, a lot of older singles suffer from chronic depression. Which one causes which? Is it being single? You're single and you're older and you have no loved one, so that's why you're depressed? Or maybe it's the other way around. People who are depressed can't, you know, are going to be single. Nobody wants to date. You want to marry somebody who, who all they talk about is committing suicide? I don't think that would be a great date. Um, how about this one? Cities with more cops also have more mur murders. Okay? There's the fact that you uh, hire new co you have more and more cops. Does that mean that causes the murders? Or is it the other way around? Is that because there's a lot of homicide in your town, they're going to hire more cops. See, that's why it's very hard to determine, you know, and you shouldn't use correlation to prove causality. It's usually the other way around. If you don't see the two variables are related, then you might say there's no causality. Now, here's another example of this. We know that people wear more clothing. The amount of clothing, you, I guess you can weigh it and see when it's really cold, people are wearing more clothing. Right? So there's definitely a correlation with how much clothing you're wearing and the temperature. The more clothing, the lower the temperature. You know, if it's zero outside, we're all going to be wearing heavy coats. So clearly there's a relationship. All right? But uh, we all agree that let's say we want the temperature to go up. It's really cold outside. So we say, okay, you know what we're going to do? How to make it all go up? We're all going to wear very little clothing because we know there's a relationship. So we're going to wear very little clothing. You know, we'll go out wearing just bathing suits, and we're going to change the weather. So that that's going to make the weather warmer. We all know that would be crazy. But the researchers, without knowing it, are doing that. Okay, well, here's another example. Umbrellas. We all know the, the number of umbrellas outside will increase. There will be more umbrellas outside than uh, if it's raining, especially a strong rain. Okay, but we all know that even though there's a correlation between the number of umbrellas and rain, you can't make it rain by going outside with an umbrella. So just keep in mind that correlation does not prove causality. If we square the um, correlation coefficient r, we get something called r squared, the coefficient of determination. Remember, r can go uh, all the way to negative 1. It can go all the way to positive 1 when you square it you only have a positive number. And in fact, what you have is a percentage. Um, the definition of R squared is uh, that it, the proportion of the variation in Y explained by X. Now, typically with correlation alone, 
we're not interested in which variable is y and which variable is x. This becomes much more important in regression. Um, but well, you know, we can we can look at it now anyway because you know correlation, you know the correlation coefficient, and you know how to to square a number. Um, and you can always switch things around if you want, and 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 ha you know call uh, call x y and y x. Uh, however, let's imagine that we know what we're doing, and that uh, we're studying the variable y, like. Why are the grades in my class variable? Why doesn't everyone get the same grade? I'd like to know that. And I'm trying to use X to explain that. And one example would be, well, how many hours did each student spend studying for the test? Uh, so I'm trying to look for explanations of the variability in Y. And it, there will be probably more than one factor, but in this case, I'm only looking at one. So um, all of that is to say, very simply, R squared has a meaning. Okay, it has, it's easy to understand and easy to explain. Um, it's the proportion of the variation in Y that's explained by X. And Y is what I'm interested in. Y is what I'm interested in studying. Uh, but I know that at this point, we're not really making distinctions between X and Y. Um, Although uh, we're going to very, very quickly move from correlation to regression, and you will want to know which variable is the independent variable, the x, and which one is the dependent variable, the y. OK, let's see how this plays out. If we have a straight line uh, with a, a positive slope, if our data falls on a straight line, and r is 1, the correlation coefficient is 1, well, that means that r squared is 1. If the correlation coefficient is a negative 1 and the line is a negative line with a negative slope and inverse relationship, r squared is 1. Either way, we're talking about 100%. 100% of the variation in y is explained by x. There are no other factors. Every single point lies on the line. Um, the variable x does a perfect job in explaining why, and, and there's nothing unexplained, there's no need to look further. Obviously, uh, those are unusual cases. Uh, let's see what happens to R square with some other typical values of R, the correlation coefficient. If R is 0 0.3, 0 0.30, or negative 0 0.30, R square will be 0.09. Now, we look at 0.30 and we say, well, I don't know. It's not zero, but it's not that high either. And then you look at R square and you say, wow, 9%. That's very little. Only 9% of the variation in Y is explained by X. 91% is unexplained. So we, R square, it's much easier to communicate, to talk about um, what this relationship or non-relationship uh, implies. Let's look at some other numbers. Look at the 50% mark, the R of 50. Correlation coefficient of 0.5 or uh, minus 0.5, R square is 0.25, it's still very low. 25% of the variation in Y is explained by X. That's not an awful lot. It's not nothing, but it's not an awful lot. On the other hand, if we have a correlation coefficient of 0.9 or negative 0.9, R square is 0.81. That means that 81% of the variation in Y is explained by X. 19% is unexplained, that's, that's okay, that's pretty good. And a correlation coefficient of 0.9 or negative 0.9 is indeed uh, considered to be very strong. Yes, that's a pretty big formula. Uh, this is the way we compute R, the correlation coefficient. Do we usually use uh, statistical software like Excel or SPSS? Sure. Is it difficult? Nah. All you need is n, the sample size, which means the number of pairs of data that you have, because your data comes in pairs, in x, y pairs. And then you need uh, five summations. You need the sum of the x, the sum of the y, the sum of the products of x times y, the sum of the x squared, each x squared, and add those up, the sum of the y squared, each y value squared, and add those up. That's all you need. Um, so. The formula looks complicated, but it's not really that bad. And certainly, uh, if you're using any kind of statistical software, 
uh, it's really, really easy. But you, you should have some experience, at least try to do this on your own once or twice. Example one, we're looking at the correlation of grade and height. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten students. Each student has a grade on an exam and a height in inches. So you, you ask each student, uh, how tall are you? And those results are in inches. Um, so we're looking to see if there's a relationship between the grade a student gets and the student's height. Um, I have a theory. I don't know if any, any of you have ever met me in person. If you have, you know that I'm not exactly tall. And I don't really see the problem because it seems to me that we ought to find out one day, I think science has been remiss, that tall people are not as smart as short people because it takes a long time for the oxygen to travel up the body and to the brain. And I, to me, that just seems obvious. So I decided to test it out. I have this data, grade and height. I got the, the summations um, and we have the scatter plot and, and let's take a look at it. Um, yeah, we're gonna move to the next slide to look at the uh, data and to get the correlation coefficient. But I have to say, just looking at this, I might be mistaken uh, in my theory. I think the data does not bear it out. That looks like a pretty random scatter plot to me. What about you? If you recall the scatter plot from the previous slide, uh, the values that are plotted, the pairs that are plotted, really look to be pretty random. It doesn't even matter what the correlation coefficient turns out to be. Um, anyone looking at the scatter plot would say there is no relationship between grade and height. But for practice, let's do it anyway. So you can see the calculations for R using that big formula and the summations that were computed. Uh, you end up with an R value of 0.1189. If you square that, you get an R square of 1.4%. And what that means is that the uh, percent of the variation in grades that's explainable by height is uh, less than one and a half percent. That's nothing. Okay, more than, you know, almost 100% of the variation in Y is explainable by something else. Uh, and that, that was pretty much expected when you looked at the scatter plot. Of course, uh, eventually uh, you will learn how to test the correlation coefficient R for significance. You're testing it against zero. Um, you may do it here. It may not be done in this course. It may be done in a future course, uh, but you should know that it exists, especially since when you get your output from Excel or SPSS or any other statistical package, there will automatically be a, a p-value to test it for significance. Um, so, Anything, no matter whether, even, even if this had turned out to be uh, significant, which of course it didn't, 0.1189 is not significantly different from zero, uh, anything less than 0.3 would not be con considered um, anything we'd want to talk about. Very uh, unimportant, useless, and irrelevant uh, relationship, if there is one at all. And of course, you know, if you really want to do a better job, uh, you're going to want to take a sample of more than 10. Um, be, but e either way, even if you have a sample of 10,000 and you end up finding that the correlation coefficient is significant, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really impress anybody. Unfortunately, I, I'll have to revise. Maybe I'll revise my theory. Uh, let's move on to the next problem. Well, we failed proving the relationship between grades and um, height, okay? We flopped on that, no relationship. Let's try a different uh, study. We're looking at grades and hours studied. Look at the scatter plot, okay? Uh, right away, just looking at that scatter plot, a researcher would say, it looks like there's going to be a strong, positive, linear relationship. 
And again, to make life easier for you, we give you the sums. Sum of x, sum of y, sum of the xy, sum of the x squared, sum of the y squared. And we're going to calculate by hand r. We'll look at the r. And again, we, sh we show you how to calculate it by hand. And we get an r of positive 0.97. I can't get higher than 1, so we've done very, very well. We're showing a very strong positive linear relationship. And the r squared is a, approximately 94%. Oh, we want to be exact, 94.09%. That means we almost explained, a sl we explained slightly more than 94%. So approximately 6% is left unexplained. So we've done a very good job. And as we said numerous times, you might want to test for significance, but we're, uh, in, at least in this slide, we're not going to show you how to do that. But you really should test for significance. But chances are it's, uh, it's significant. And uh, we can tell you, if the correlation coefficient is more than 0.8, you could say more than significant. It's strong. Here's more than 0.9. It's 0.97. So you can say it's a very strong correlation. Can't use the word significant until you test for significance. In this problem, we're trying to see the relationship between price and quantity demanded, okay? And um, by the way, it's two of the sums are on the bottom. See some of the x, some of the y. We give you all the sums. But I look at the scatter plot first. Looking at that scatter plot, there's no way in the world this is not going to be, you know, uh, showing a strong negative relationship, a negative linear relationship. You can almost draw a line through most of those points. Not all of them, but most of them. Okay, so we're going to just calculate R the hard way. Look at your R. You end up with a negative, negative 0.99. It can't get less than negative 1. It's almost a perfect negative relationship. That's because most of the points were on the line. I think one or two were off the line. So it's negative 0.99. The R squared is about 98%. I mean, you explain 98%. Price explained 98% of the variation, the quantity demanded. O only about 2% is unexplained. Right? So, you, so you know you've ha you're finding a very strong relationship, but inverse relationship. Okay, and we, we test for significance, but again, you have to trust us that it was significant. So we have a significant correlation. It's negative 0.99, almost perfect. And we can even use the word strong now because it's eyeballing it and saying that if you explain 98% of the variation in something, the Y here again is quantity demanded. If you explain 98%, you've done a, a great job of explaining. So you've done a very good job. So we can actually hopefully test for significance and we'll say there's a strong inverse relationship and significant too between price and quantity demanded. Here's an interesting problem. It actually, it's based on a real live study to see is the relationship between how attractive somebody is and their salary, what they're given. What do you think? Well, there's this famous study looking at that. As you probably know, I got a very high salary when I was hired by Brooklyn College, right? Uh, I think my co-author is laughing. Um, but um, how high was your salary when you were hired? Anyway, here's the data. Now, assuming we have a, a panel of judges that's the way they usually do this you have a panel of judges and they come up with a rating for each person we took 10 people randomly and the lowest rating is a zero and the highest rating which by the way is my rating uh was nine so we have the scores from zero to nine and we see how much they started with okay i think these numbers are quite low but uh, this could have been done a long time ago these are made up numbers by the way Okay, so we give you the N. Notice N is 10, because there are 10 pairs, 10 people actually we're looking at. We'll get 10 people. And we have their uh, starting salary, that's the Y variable, right? That's the dependent variable. And we have the sum of the X, sum of the Y, you have everything you need. And now we're going to calculate R. Anyway, we're going to look at the relationship between attractiveness and salary. We've given you all the sums that you need and the N. Notice the N of 10 is there. And we calculate R. And it works out to, and it's positive, 0.891. And the R squared is 79, about 79.4%, I'm rounding, 79%. All right, so uh, we end up with an R of 0.89, which is pretty high. You can't go higher than 1, so we're not far from the 1. And uh, we'd have to test for significance. You have to trust us on this, that the it is significant. And uh, so we know that we found a significant relationship 
between attractiveness and, and salary. And we have a strong relationship too. It's not just significant. So it means it's more than zero, it's not zero. But here we can say that it's uh, quite strong, 0.891. We've explained 79.4% of the variation. And um, again, as we've told you, there's a way to test for significance. It's a lot easier to have a computer do it for you. And we're going to see when we do regression how Excel does this for us. If you go to our handouts page, you can learn how to use Excel, how to do scatter plot. Everything is there. So um, you can go there to see how to do this. So in this problem, we're going to use Excel. This is the real world. In the real world, no one expects you to take a pencil and paper and start calculating standard deviations or correlations. Too much work, and you're bound to get it wrong if you do it by hand. Okay, so we're looking at years of education. See, we have people who had only 10 years of education. It means they dropped out of high school. And then we have people who went all the way to 20 years of education. And we're trying to lay, relate it to their wage, dollars per hour. Notice the, uh, the first two people who were, only had 10 years of education. One is getting the minimum wage of 15. Another one's getting 18. They're not doing too well. Okay, is there a relationship? Well, if you go to the function wizard, that's like little FX that you'll see in Excel. After you put in your data, of course. Put in the data. You type it in. And then go to the function wizard. And you're going to see there's something called Corel. That's for correlation. Okay, so you look for C-O-R-R-E-L, correlation. And you're going to have to put in the array where the data is located. So array 1, okay, that's going to be from B, you can see it from B4 all the way to B20. So you're basically showing where the data is located. And then it's going to ask you, you have to put in array 2. And that's C4 to C20. And by the way, they better be the same <laughs> amount of data in each one because it's pairs. So you can, if you put array 2 as C4 to C22, you're going to get a slap in the face from the computer. Okay, it's, uh, if a computer had a hand, it would slap you. It's got to be the same. It's got to match. All right? It's B4 to B20 and C4 to C20. It doesn't matter which is X and Y. When you do correlation, you can reverse. It doesn't make a difference. And the computer will give you the correlation coefficient with about a million decimal places. I, we ended at 4, so 0.7264. It doesn't tell you whether it's significant or not, unfortunately, but there's ways to do that. But we know that the correlation coefficient R is 0.7264, and it's positive. And for R squared, we can do it by hand, just square the R, and we get 52.77%. That's just done by hand. And we also asked for the scatter plot, which you can see, and you can see it's kind of a positive linear relationship. So that's the easiest way to get the correlation coefficient and using Excel with that function wizard. Thank you for attending this lecture. We had a lot of fun with correlation. Uh, I'm not even really joking. I think this was, this was a lot of fun. It's interesting to look at different uh, relationships that you can uh, search for uh, in your variables. Um, back to what we always say at the end of the lecture, the only thing that'll work for you is to do lots and lots and lots of problems. Practice, practice, pra practice. Find the problems wherever you can, and especially in um, this type, this subject, this topic, uh, use your calculator and also use Excel. You want to get practice using both.